Check out our new iPhone application to keep track of your orchids. Link in the description box. Hi there! This is going to be the first orchid diary video of the year with a little recap of the last two months. The first clips of this video were filmed in November of last year and the last ones in January this year. What you see here is my psychopsis eagerly trying to bloom with three blooms at a time and it didn't succeed. When the bud opened, the first flower faded, but at least she tried. Also in bloom in November, after having suffered from massive cold damage, my BC yellow bird it has pulled through. And in the background, a little invader. We had a stinking bug invasion in our area. This was one of the very few sunny days this winter. It's my Epicatlia plicaboa enjoying the sun rays. My huge brownish banda has worked on two spikes and the first one is in bloom here. And the plant is waiting to be staked. It's still standing on its own but the axis is a bit wobbly. My yellow no ID, Nelio Catlia, managed to put out quite a few birds over the winter, which was nice to look at. But the really intense fragrance didn't show up this time. I think that's more of a spring or summertime thing with this plant. My pink fragrant vanda doesn't care if it's winter or summertime. Its fragrance is so, so yummy and sweet, just like candy, every time it blooms. It's so nice. And the blooms are very long lasting. What more could I ask for? It's such a nice plant. And here's a super quick clip of a flibodium that I repotted that I've had for a couple of years and that has never done really well. It's rather for me than for you because you're not even seeing the leaves, sorry for that. And here you see me giving my very large bluish vanda a shower. It's nothing that I do on a regular basis but as soon as the leaves get too dusty I need to do something because the light levels are too low anyway. And this is my Monstera. For this one I use my vacuum cleaner. It's too large, I would never be able to get it into my shower. But the vacuum cleaner does a really good job here. My new acquisition, an Oncidium Tiny Twinkle, has stopped blooming now. But I'm postponing repotting it. My Dendrobium Berry has so many spikes at different stages of growth. I'm so happy because this way I have a very prolonged blooming time on this one. And the same goes for my community pot of tiny twinkles. The red variety was earlier this year and has already stopped blooming, but now the light yellow one is in bloom. A few buds are forming on the new spikes of my Fal Ludemaniana on the northern windowsill. And right next to her, two pink uiculas and a Tredesentia cutting. And this one is a Cattleya with red blooms that I got at our Christmas raffle. It's really risky to repot a plant in autumn or winter in my area because the light levels are so low. But I had to repot this one because the pot was full of snail eggs and other crawlers. And let's not forget about all the mold I found and the mushy roots. I just couldn't put it off any longer, but somehow I knew that this plant would pull through. For some reason I found that this plant looked like a fighter. 
and almost instantly after the repotting, the plant activated its two new growths that had already been there, one of which had been buried inside the medium. And now both are growing actively and are putting out new roots already. Let's take a quick look at my house plant slash isolated plant windowsill here. Kalankoe, Harwortia, Echinopsis subdenudata, my only path. A little cattleya with an even worse repotting story behind it. My owl plant stand with more Kalankoes. The repotted Phlebodium, a mini Dendrobium elen, Cephalocereus senilis. Stapelia grandiflora, a chili plant, another cattleya, the red cattleya that I repotted, and the gongora. And here you see my Phalaenopsis schilleriana crossed with manii, which has put out two long flower spikes. And I can only imagine how these flower spikes would have developed with adequate light levels. But with the low light levels that I have here without extra lights, it only managed to produce about zero to two flowers per branch. And my Phalaenopsis schilleriana has put out its first spike, the very first one in my care. I'm really excited. I think it's going to have six flowers. And at this point, a shout out to my fellow orchid YouTubers, Mary G Orchids and Jun's Orchids, who have shown their beautiful Chilleriana blooms quite recently. I will put a link to their videos in the description box below. And now at the beginning of January, my Psychopsis is having another try and is about to open three flowers at the same time. Keep your fingers crossed, please. I'd be so excited if it would manage to bloom from three spikes at a time. A couple of months ago, my Ricara Francis Fox produced this thing here. I don't know what it is. Is it a sheath with a strange shape? I simply don't know, but I wish it would just bloom for me. And Brassocatlia amethyst working on two new growths. One of my few no ID fowls is coming into bloom on its secondary spike here. I really like this plant. It takes up quite a lot of space on the windowsill, but on the other hand, it's just uncomplicated. I don't have to worry about it and it's having a good time there. Another no ID fowl with a secondary and a new spike. I think the flowers don't look too nice when they are opening up, but they are really nice when they are open. They look very romantic. My Phalaenopsis cornu survey is worrying me because it has lost quite a lot of leaves and even spikes during winter time. And I don't know if it's just desperate for light and regular feeding and watering, so I don't know if it's my fault or if there's something serious behind it, like with my Phalaenopsis Leo Doro, maybe you remember. I will put a link in the upper right corner of the screen where you can see what happened to her. My little Phalaequestris is blooming for the very first time while it's fighting an ugly splotch there on the leaf. And by now it has lost this leaf, it has abandoned it without me helping out. Meanwhile, the mother plant of the little keiki is working on a new leaf and as you can see, one of the spikes has dried up and I'm convinced that through rough times like winter time, they are able to consume the energy from the old spikes and that is beneficial to the plant. And that's why I usually don't cut flower spikes that are still green. Okay, I think that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I wish I were able to make more videos, but I just can't at the moment, I'm too busy. I really hope you have a wonderful springtime, the days are becoming longer. So, happy growing to all of you. Bye bye!